Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, folks. Uh, before today's uh, you know, review, uh, I have one update on the uh, 2023-11 release. So now we are open for the uh, you know, uh, call for participation for the 2023-11 release, which will be you know, planned uh, uh, release date is uh, this November. So please check the email uh, that I sent out to the community. So if you have any candidate features, uh, please let us know. Thank you. I think today's uh, topic is uh, Google team will present uh, two HLDs uh, related to the GMI enhancement. I think uh, Ritu, I will hand over this to you. Hey everyone, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Enzo. I think we can uh, start uh, with it. I see Tomek already on the call. Tomek, are you ready? Um, yes, we have uh, Ryan and uh, Sally to, to present those respective. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so I think yeah, we can start then. I think we should start maybe with um, uh, Ryan, the, the safe on set. Sure. Uh, do I need to share screen or? Yeah, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Let me pull it up the document then. I'm not familiar with Zoom. I gotta find this share button. Uh, and it's at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I can see your screen. Uh, so this is a diagram that's embedded in the uh, the rest of the document. But let me start with the um, start with the overview. So the feature is uh, what we're calling save on set in order to um, allow the GNMI server to initiate a save of the config database after uh, some fields have been changed. Anytime a field is changed, therefore uh, allowing persistent uh, data across resets of the switch <clears throat> is the general idea. Um, the timing diagram here shows uh, what we have. Uh, so anytime the set comes in, uh, we won't write to the config database. After the config database has been written to, we call a uh, transformer from the sonic management common, which then sends a call through the D bus to trigger the config management save uh, as part of the uh, GNMI set. Uh, Overall, the feature will have a, a flag that is off by default, so it'll only be turned on as needed. Um, let's see if I cover everything. I think that's all the big details. Is there anything anyone would like to know? Is this a, is this related to some checkpoint or not no not not that? I mean, you can think of it as a checkpoint of the config database after a set. That does it give us uh, some explicit checkpoints so you know later we can use the rollback or. Uh, there's no rollback feature uh, as part of this. Um, it, when the config DB uh, is triggered, it does create a file that could possibly use, be used for that, but we're using it uh, as part of the boot up. So if there is a backup 
uh, or if there's this file exists and we load the config database from the file uh, in order to get persistent data con persistent configuration across resets so basically the idea is that so whenever you if you have this feature turned on uh, and you restart the switch uh, you don't have to configure it from the scratch you just uh, it will wake up with the with the same configuration it had before uh, it has been brought down and yes you can in theory have a uh, multiple you know versions of of this file i mean as Ryan said, uh, we currently have only one, which is overwritten every time uh, a new set operation takes place. So I wonder if this is, uh, you know, if, uh, if people are using, you know, CLI to, to change that, does it also trigger automatic save, or this is only from the DMI part, or, you know? Save. This, is only, this is only from GNMI, but it uses the same mechanism that the CLI uses. So you could you could accomplish the same thing by using the CLI to to generate the config backup, but this make if you turn the feature on, it does it automatically upon uh, GNMI set. So what is the motivation for saving the you know configuration on every set? Um, so the set can uh, have uh, you know more than one configurations like a big. I believe you're using open config models for the config. Um, I'm sorry, I'm missing the question. So what is the motivation for saving on every set? Um, is, is it for some use case? Uh, so saving on every set allows sure. us to do Saving on every set allows us to be confident that uh, when we if we didn't have a, a switch reboot, that the configuration would be uh, up to date. Sorry, Venkat, I'm not sure if that's your connection or mine, but I'm not uh, getting all of your audio. Okay. Have any problem of like, uh, that's why like you're saying, trying to understand. I could hear you now. Okay, that's yeah. why not, the device is not coming through. Okay, so I would, do you, do you have any problem? management connectivity uh, that to the switch hello yeah sorry you, it your audio just keeps cutting out for you i don't know if it's me or not no no that's fine uh, go ahead i'll, I'll ask uh, uh, the questions after thank you i mean the, the, i believe the 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 i mean the motivation here is basically that uh, you know if you have uh, a lot of switches uh, Pushing the configuration onto them every time a switch reboots is, uh, you know, time-consuming. And in a situation when you want the, the re reboot to take as minimum time as possible and make the switch av available again, um, that's the that's the motivation to to keep the configuration uh, saved already on on the switch. But again, as Ryan said, this is an optional feature. It will be. Uh, we, we want to have it uh, turned on or off uh, as a command line parameter. Um, so if, if your usage scenario doesn't call for it, then there is no point in, um, you know, in saving those files or triggering saving these files. So when this feature is turned up, will there be a separate file content other than config db dot json all the time or it is going to be somehow merged with the config db dot json after fast reboot uh, 
Uh, Tomek, can you answer that one? Um, if I understood correctly, you're asking if this uh, uh, file with the, uh, the, the content of the DB is present all the time? Did I get it right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. That's the that's the benefit. That's the this idea basically, right? So, um, if you wake up, I mean, when the switch wake up, if there is if this file is present, it's being used to restore the content of the config DB, and then every change to it will modify this file. And uh, yeah, so basically, it means that, I mean, if we, if the switch is after okay. uh, factory restart, right? It's not it's not there, but um, once you do a set, it will be. Does it make sense? Yeah. OK, thank you. Do we have any other questions? Should we move on to the next document then? Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Sally, are you ready? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, can you hear my, uh, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is another feature that Google wants upstream to your MF uh, framework. So basically the feature is called the must arbitration. The purpose for this feature is to avoid modular control, uh, multiple con controllers trying to control one switch. Uh, and the master arbitration is basically only work for the ZGRPC. And um, um, during the implementation, we uh, for each set request, uh, there will be an election ID assigned for the request, uh, and this election ID is um, is increasing, is monolithically increasing, and will never duplicate. And the uh, switch side will decide the largest number for the largest the largest uh, uh, election ID and choose that uh, set request as a master uh, as a master request and uh, execute the set uh, set operation. And uh, for the other gRPC like get master arbitrations will not take um, will not work there. Uh, so the get request will not be affected by the master arbitration feature. And uh, here are some uh, <clears throat> scenarios um, for the must arbitration. By default, must arbitration is not enabled. Uh, in the not enabled case, uh, each set request will just be assigned with a zero election ID. And in this case, each, uh, each set request will be sent to the uh, switch and uh, the switch will execute uh, each of the set request. But if the master arbitration feature is enabled, uh, like for this diagram, um, like we have the case that uh, the second, the, the set request from the controller two is actually greater than the set request from controller one. So the switch side will recognize controller two as a master and ignore the following uh, set request coming from the controller one. And uh, here is a case that uh, even though the set, uh, the set, uh, the controller two is recognized as the master, uh, but because it is doing a get request after the master is set, so the get request from controller one will not get impacted. 
and the implementation for this feature is also available uh, is also available and ready for review. Any questions? No questions? Oh, sorry. I, I think maybe uh, uh, you know, the P4 uh, is the wrong time or is high to GMI? Uh, sorry, you, you sound, your voice got cut off. Um, I didn't hear the full. Does this uh, apply to the the default runtime, or does this apply to the GMI? You mean the election ID, or uh, how do we? No, the, the scope the scope of this work. My scope. So the, uh, um, this this feature is uh, part of the GNMI specification. It's an optional feature, but uh, it's part of GNMI, so it's not it does not apply to P four runtime. Okay. 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 So, but the, I guess you, you know, the, I don't know if there's a kind of uh, um, what, what, when does uh, this um, ID, you know, the client know this ID? Every time when the GMI set up, they will know this ID, or. Um, um. It's per transaction, you get the ID accompanied with the transaction. The implementation of this election ID is outside of the of the switch. So it's uh, something that needs agreement between those controllers. No, I get that part. I get that part. But I mean, is this ID per master or is this ID per transaction? Per transaction. No, 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 no. It's, it's set for... For a controller, once the uh, the controller gets this ID in in, in the election process, it's uh, it's fixed for it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, th I think he's asking if it's transmitted in every transaction, though. Pro masters, and uh, you know, for particular transaction, because he need to compare those master IDs, right? So then, you know, for example, one controller connect first. And then the other controller connects second. Uh, yeah, so then how does this uh, work? Because I think maybe, you know, not familiar with this uh, specification of the master operation specification. I guess for people that is familiar with this uh, specification, maybe it's easier to understand. But for people who's not familiar with specification, maybe we need some background on that part. Okay, so, so maybe a little bit of a background here. Um, it's a very short version here, right? So the idea is basically that uh, you have multiple controllers and, and each of them is assigned some number. Uh, and those numbers are, how those numbers are assigned is um, outside of discussions here, right? It's, uh, um, it's just uh, the, 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 the assumption here is that this number is unique per controller and it's always uh, increasing. So say you start assigning them from zero and then you assign one, two and so on, right? Until the, the end of the, um, of the space for this uh, election ID. And then uh, this election ID is used, is set in every GNMI set operation. Uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, like a metadata which uh, tells the uh, the priority of the of the controller because the bigger the number the um, you know the, that's the the higher priority of this of this controller and only the the one which with the highest ID is uh, being listened to and the the set of set operations performed from this controller so basically it means that if as in this case, for example, here, you have a, 
controller one with uh, ID of uh, one. And, and that's the first time a controller con connects to the GNMI. This controller is able to, uh, to perform set operations. But then the controller two with the ID of two uh, performs an operation and uh, it's able to do that because it's uh, election ID is higher than the, the current one. And then when the controller one tries to, to perform another set operation, it's being, uh, its request is being rejected because its ID is lower from the, the, the highest one, which was heard until this point, which is two. I mean, this is okay. um, very simple, but it it's give us, gives us uh, some control over, you know. Um, yeah, 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 I get it. But what if a controller two is dead? And then do we remove that, uh, you know, this idea? And then if controller one send it, so we still, you know, the owner, the controller one's command. So the, then the controller one should get a higher uh, ID like three from the another mechanism outside of the spec. Yeah, and also uh, if controller one wants to do a get request, uh, master arbitration shouldn't stop him, uh, stop it to do this because it's only affect the set RPC, CRPC. So controller one can still get access to the data, uh, but just to have no access to set to write. Okay, so this is always, uh, um, you know, this uh, in, in, strictly increasing, right? So I mean, I'm just trying to think what if, uh, what if there's a restart of the GMI, uh, you know, this uh, server? Do we lose all this ID and uh, then, uh, you know, do we lose all this information? Uh, and then in that case, we could potentially allow some, uh, you know, if we need to win or we need probably potentially allow, you know, some, some of the controller that connect the, the set, right? So I'm just thinking, you know, in the restart of the GMI, uh, what could happen there? Because do we remember those ideas across a, you know, GMI restart? No, there are, uh, there are, uh, they jump back to, to zero and then again kind of the election process takes place right so the first controller uh, which is connected is being assumed to be the the master and its id is being recorded and then if another controller connects and uh, uses a different higher id it will become the master so when does it controller tell the ID at the time of the GMI connect? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, this, the, this election ID is a, um, a part of the every set message. So in this part of, every, I mean, basically it's part of every GMI message. This is some, <clears throat> this is an extension field which is, um, uh, has been added to, to the every single um, yeah, GNMI message. Election ID is okay. just one of those uh, message of uh, this uh, um, extensions which can be uh, added to this uh, through this feature, uh, but there are others too. Like yeah. Okay, but basically the the GMI, you know, the the aging here only need to remember the highest number so far. And they yes. always compare the ID with the highest number, right? So, yes. Um, but when, when when the when the when the agent uh, restart, the you know the, the counter drops to zero and we start again, right? So. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Did we talk about the restart behavior in the documents? Yes, absolutely. Sorry, please please add this to to this document. Okay. Thank okay. And I assume, you know, th this feature can be enabled or disabled, right? So, you know, it's not like by default enabled, something like that. 
by default is disabled. Okay, so you can enable it at runtime, right? So. Um. I don't think that it's in runtime enablement. We are currently now using a command land flag to enable. Uh, meaning that we need, to, we need to restart the GMI server when we enable it or? Yeah, every time when we restart the GMI server, we can restart it. Okay. The reason why this uh, cannot be enabled at runtime, you know, people can turn it on, turn it off without restarting so, the GMI server. In order to do that, you need to define some, some API for that, right? I mean, we, um, yeah, we can, we can add it, but um, so far we haven't seen a use case for, for doing that. So it's kind of, of course, okay. uh, the, the reasoning here was like, you know, what uh, the, 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 the switch is, you know, the, what environment it will be used in, right? So, oh, just, just sorry, maybe, maybe I didn't get. So, how, how does this feature enable and disable not through the config DB? It's, um, um, it's like the other features basically read from, uh, I think it's a config DB. Yeah, it's config DB will, 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 uh, we will store the value for the uh, flag and know that if this. Feature is enabled or disabled. Maybe maybe I'll let you to go to the document. Uh, maybe I ask you know, that too many questions. Yeah, so oh, it's a very good discussion. And I'll just maybe I not maybe it's not completely clear here, but uh, basically. Even if this feature is enabled, you and if you do not add the this, if you not use this uh, um, election ID extension in those messages, it simply behaves exactly the same way as it's, you, you know, as you would expect from GNMI. So basically, every um, controller connected to the switch is treated as a master, right? So that's basically exactly the same behavior as. Uh, as you have today. So you can, in theory, have it turned on all the time and simply not yeah, yeah. like this. But I, I guess, you know, we have a, you know, several behavior, right? So, you know, what, why is the, um, for example, controller is not having this optional field, but the feature is enabled on the aging side. And then there is a, a case where, you know, the controller have these fields, but the feature is disabled on the aging side. And then both, and then there's a both enable. And then there's another case where the controller, I mean, there's still other two cases where, you know, the, the controller have this feature, but the, you know, this feature is enabled during the middle of the connection of the, the in the GMI case. And then there's a, uh, Another case where this feature is enabled, but controller switch the behavior mm -hmm. during that connection, right? So I guess you know, there are several cases when we talk about the interaction between the controller and the, the agent. I don't know if we discuss all these cases. Uh, I think one thing to clarify, the feature is enabled for GNMI. So the only scenario saying uh, the controller doesn't have this feature is a scenario that uh, the controller doesn't have the election ID with the set request sending to us. And in such case, we by default should uh, should recognize as zero. And uh, compare compare whatever already uh, stored yeah. and with a zero value. So I I don't I don't feel there is a great gap there. But the, okay, I, I mean I, I think it's better to that because I also think another one is that okay, what if you have mixed the controllers? You know, some are zero, some doesn't support, some supports. Do you discuss what is the behavior at those cases? You know, do we just automatically reject the whatever the controller doesn't have this ID? Um, 
for the controller part, uh, our discussion, because um, this is out, outside of the switch. So no, just... no, I get, the, I get the election ID, you know, that part is outside the switch, right? But I'm saying, you know, from the age and the behavior, you know, what, what if he has, uh, you know, mixed controllers talking to I think the, I think the, the answer is enabled. Like... I think your answer would be that any switch or any controller not providing an ID is is assumed zero. Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? So if you if you have some controllers providing an ID, then that ID will be used. And if it's higher than zero, then any other switch or any other controller uh, will be rejected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get this. With the, I think, yeah, so maybe I, what I'm saying that, uh, you know, can we, I mean, is the document, uh, you know, having all this, uh, you know, case be documented. So when the people want to know, um, you know, the behavior of various scenarios, they can look at the document and, uh, and uh, get the answer. I mean, that, that is my, uh, you know, main purpose, right? So, you know, this uh, make, you know, you know, this document discuss all those cases so people will know, okay, what is the behavior? Um, yeah. That makes all, sense. Through all the various uh, cases, right? So, yeah. We can add like a chart that uh, shows all the cross of which pieces are using which and what the expected outcome would be. Thanks, I can add that part for the mix controller piece. I, I think that's a good idea. I mean, this, let's let's expand a little bit this section to, to cover also those cases um, with mix environment, definitely. Uh, make it explicit to, to make sure that it's uh, not lost or not, you know, you don't have to read the whole document to understand what will happen in such case. Thank you. Can you go to this? How is this feature enabled? Maybe I didn't get that part. Uh, when, the, uh, when the switch got uh, restarted, and uh, we will have a command line flag testing and they enable this feature. Oh, this is a command line. OK. Oh, get it, get it. Okay, this is command line, expose wire the command line. Okay. And that, that's why we, we discussed before that we don't do this uh, enable, we don't we don't enable this feature during the runtime. Instead, we do it uh, every time when we reboot or restart GMI server. Can I capture one what config DB table that you are uh, going to have this new field for controlling this, uh, you know, master arbitration true false? Uh, no, they say they are saying they are not adding, right? So they are not adding. Yeah, it looks yeah, like no. A new field will be created in config DB to record the status of arbitration. I don't know what is this one. That... We record it for for reference, so people know that if the master arbitration feature is enabled or disabled. Oh, this is like a state kind of information. Yes. Okay, then it should go to state DB. Uh, but we write into it, so. No, no, it's, uh, I think it's uh, there's some misunderstanding here. Um, we keep the you know so when the um, UMF starts, it's. Uh, there's a script which is reading the, the configuration, right? And one of the, the state of this feature is saved in the config DB. So we read it from there. So it's uh, basically allows you to, by modifying the config DB, saving the, it's in the, 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 the startup file we were discussing in the previous uh, HLD, restarting the switch, it will allow you to, um, to, to enable or disable this feature kind of, you know, on the switch, or you can just modify the, the config DB and restart the, the container with UMF. So that was the, the purpose of keeping this, uh, um, the state of this feature in the config DB. 
So user won't be able to touch this uh, the the new field that you are updating on the config DB, right? Uh, it it is in, internally updated from the GNMI server. Is that correct? Um, we are read only. We are treating it as a read only value. We can modify it, you know, using say uh, CLI, and that will impact the you know the the behavior of this feature when you restart it. I'm not completely clear if I'm. I'm sorry, I can question, but. So this this field, basically, whatever you're talking about, right, is is will be updated dynamically. Is that what you're saying? I mean, the, the user cannot, uh, not supposed to touch this field, right? Um, it, maybe in the means of click command or whatever. So, um, you know, the user can use it, can touch it, but the impact of changing it will be only during the restart of the UMF. Okay. So if you modify it, you know, during normal operation, it will not turn off or turn on this feature. All right. Only the restart of UMF will, will take place. Did you mention that in every uh, message, the DGNMA message carries this, uh, you know, uh, the master arbitration flag? Is that true? Or So, I mean, th there is a place for it, right? I okay. Mean, you can set it, but you don't have to. If you don't, then we assume that it's zero. Okay. So Venkat, you are asking about this flag or the uh, the EID? I'm asking about this flag, whether it's carried the master RP, the extension, message extension, something is there, right? Yes, that's what you can see it on the screen line. Yeah, yeah, that, that carries arbitration, master arbitration value. I don't know okay. what that is. Is that you know can can that be used to uh, say that whether the master uh, arbitration is desired or not for this particular configuration from that particular controller no, no it's just the election id which okay. is part of this uh, and yeah and it's just used as a part of this protocol if you if you if you do not enable it you can add this field and it will have no impact If you could have some sequence diagram, that will be helpful. Um, like when you get the message from controller one, you know, what are all the tables being updated? I don't know if that's captured somewhere. Um, and then how is it referred for subsequent uh, GNMA server restart and all those things? I, I believe that would be helpful. Uh, for the changes of the flag? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. Um, so, so I'm just I'm just curious, you know, for, for those master with the lower ID when they try to do the set, what do they get in return? Like unsupported, something like that. Permission denied. Okay. Uh, it will return arrow with permission denied uh, message. Just drop the request. Sorry, in the diagram, if you already answered the question, like how does controller two knows about uh, N, uh, election ID N, right? Uh, is there somewhere outside of this controller, there's some controller manager or something that manages the election IDs, uh, basically to which, what, you know, election ID to be used for, for controller or something? Yes. Uh, yes, it's outside of the control and the way controller management doesn't have uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have any idea of uh, how this uh, election ID assigned to each of the controllers. Okay. Can you can you put I mean some um, 
I understand, you know, it's outside the scope of this document, but can you have some diagram that says, okay, because there is a connection between these two controllers, just have for the completeness sake, you know, have some controller manager that is that you know provides the uh, election IDs to controllers, some some diagram that would uh, help to get the um, you know paint the picture clearly. I would say. Uh, Tomek, do we have uh, uh, such a controller manage manager <laughs> to? Uh, I mean, the, the diagram has to be added. Yes, I agree oh. that it's, this will make the document clear that okay. there is some external entity which is uh, telling the controllers w what the IDs are, and it's making sure that the, there are uh, being incremented all the time. That's that's a great idea. Okay, thanks. And and also in terms of. Uh... Uh, when controller uh, two has the higher election IDs and then you're getting the set request from controller one, is that like uh, it's a temporary uh, because the controller manager knows about the the, the master uh, controller, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the controller one would still initiate the you know set messages uh, to the GNMI server. Is that uh, something you will duplicate the request all the time uh, to um, uh, two controllers or? Uh, the controller one will, you know, uh, the request that we get on the controller one, it's a, it's a temporary, but it will stop eventually once, uh, you know, controller manager knows that controller two is the master. So the, the controller manager is only responsible for assigning those IDs. Right? Okay. okay. The rest is out of its control. Um, so basically, as, as you see on this diagram, it's possible that even though the controller two has bigger ideas and is the actual master, the controller one, will be able to perform uh, a set operation before the controller, you know, if, if it happens that it will be the first one to, to send the set request. But this will be um, his, its only chance to do that. And most likely the, the, the configuration will be changed by the controller two to the right one. Okay, so I mean, my question is, do we um, continuously get the uh, errors for the set request being uh, pushed from the controller one? Is that some, some uh, somewhere controlled that uh, it will stop sending the set request, but it will do only the get operation afterwards? Or like you will, you will always see the set request being sent from controller one? Well, I mean, again, that's the the implementation of the controller one. With okay. How it will react, right? I mean. All right. Okay. Get the permission denied uh, mass error type it should realize that it's not a you know not not the master and should stop doing about it but this is up to the control and i mean this uh, just don't make, don't don't get this wrong i mean this is a very simple mechanism and it's definitely has its uh, disadvantages but uh, if we want to if uh, you know have a fully working solution we we'll have to go with something like I don't know, Paxos or something like that, which is more. Yeah, my concern is like if controller one tries to send the um, uh, set request and it keeps on throwing an error, I, I believe we are not capturing in the syslog. I'm, I don't want to see a lot of, you know, uh, false positives on the syslog. So that, that's the uh, only Got thing it. I'm worrying about. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, syslog is spam is also our concern. Yeah. Any other questions or suggestions? One, one just thought, um, uh, can there be a situation like this? The controller one is the master and uh, it is doing set request and the GNMS server is having the controller one's uh, EAD mm -hmm. and controller two now become master with the new EAD higher than that controller one but it does not do any set. So the GNMS server still assumes the EAD of uh, controller one as the latest master as it know. So till controller two do the first set, right? The, the controller one's set will be still accepted because the situation could be configuration coming from the U. Even though two is so, um, uh, I just wonder, do we need some kind of out 
kind of thing. Uh, uh, no, 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 okay, maybe I'll, I'll just finish my thing. So what I was uh, trying to get from here is like the GNMA server is always uh, taking the EAD from the set request. Rather, okay. if it do a EAD learn from the get request as well. So even though there is no real set needed from the user, right? So whenever the election happens, the latest controller, which is the master, can do once, like small, like, yeah, yeah, get, some get, right? So just to sync the latest EAD to the GNMS server so that GNMS server never run into the out of sequence of EADs. So uh, just, just that thought. Uh, so the EAD will only be sent for the set request. So for the get, there will be no EAD assigned for this. Yeah, just to sync up the latest EAD to the GNMA server. So is it possible to add the EAD in the get so that GNMA server never go out of sync with the latest master? You know what, let, let me check, the, let us check the, the specification, what the spec says about that. But uh, in general, that's a very interesting idea. Um, mm -hmm. Because otherwise, yeah, you would have to make the every single controller to perform a set operation as soon as soon Correct. as you idea. That's Correct. The, there is no dummy object or something to set as well. So otherwise we have to introduce some dummy object in the Sonic side just for syncing this if it is only possible through set, right? So if it is if it can be learned through get, it's easy. So we can just do some get, right? So right. It definitely is uh, not uh you know, um, destroying cooperation. So that's that's uh, that's interesting idea. But again, I, let me let me check the spec. Um, I, I just look. Yeah. It yeah. only references yeah. that. So I mean, it's it's possible, but it, to make a change like that would require an update to the specification. Could you repeat? Sorry, because it was some sorry. Yeah, the, the specification only references the set message. Um, I, I posted a link in the chat as well, but um, yeah, I, like it, it sounds like a good idea, but it would require an update to the implementation or the, uh, to the specification. Okay. So if uh, we are not able to extend it in the get, then uh, we may have to do some dummy set, uh, some object, something. Yeah. I believe the, the the master election will be delayed until you get the set request. That's all it is, right? Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> for for get operation, irrespective of the role, uh, you are going to allow the get operation to go through from GNMS server perspective, correct? Yes. GNMS server get always allowed to both <clears throat> controller. Yeah. Maybe useful for something <clears throat> between the configuration, something like that, or whatever it is. Our, our load sharing, our load sharing, whatever it is. So, so but uh, yeah, I, I don't know whether there is a chance for still controller one resumes the set. Uh, it can stop on the first permission denied. Uh, that okay, that was on the other discussion from when it initiated thing. But uh, this one, I don't know. Like if uh, controller manager uh, gives the new election ID to the controller two. And it should inform the controller one as well um, about the lower ID on their side. So as a slave or something, uh, it, it is up to the implementation on the controller in that front. But when it comes to the Sonic integration, if it is completely relying on the incoming information to accept the set, then it doesn't even know if controller one continue it, even though controller two is the right master. So yeah, and that looks like little like incomplete uh, on the GRM server side in the Sonic. So what would be the suggestion to solve this kind of issues? If uh, we are not extending in the Git? Um. Yeah, I mean, let's let's let us think about it and talk to the open config um, um, working group and uh, let's find out because it might be easy to to change that. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That would be great to change it in the get. So that will be easy. Actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, I, I think we have a, uh, a list of few items to update the document. Um, uh, so we'll, Sally will update it and uh, post it for review again. Um, thank you for, for the discussion, all the comments. That was very productive. Thank you very much. Uh, can you please capture this uh, issue in the document, uh, at least uh, the limitation, if we are not able to solve this well? Okay. Next. Okay, that's I guess all from our side. The one last question, sorry. Um, the GNM is set and all those things, right? Are we, um, the payload is basically the, um, the prototype of information or like any open config? Uh, I don't know what, what are we carrying? Um, is that something you can share from, to the community? Or... Um, sorry, could you repeat? I didn't get the question. So the GNMI, uh, the set operation, right? Um, I in, in the previous HLD, you in the first HLD, you mentioned that there's a GNMI set operation. Um, we are the translate the management, uh, you know, framework infra. Um, mm-hmm. Does the payload contain um, um, the open config uh, model information, or like you're using, I don't know, the Sonic Young model information there as a payload? So um, for the set, it doesn't matter. It's uh, performed for every single set operation. Um, okay. I mean, the same applies basically to the master arbitration. <clears throat> it's also a GNMI feature. Okay. Yeah, there's there's no payload sent to the switch in that in for the save on set issue. It's uh, the it's just a thing the switch does when it receives a set request. Okay, but even otherwise, for the regular payload, it will be the open country models. I just want, I'm wondering, curious to know what. Well, it's just it's it's just saving a copy of the config database. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, I think we're done. Thanks. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, bye. bye.